Hey guys, this is Doug. Hi guys. And uh, Doug's uh, YouTube channel is SB Seeker. He has a very cool thing going on over here. Yeah, we do. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your boat, what are the specs on it? Uh, it's 74 feet long, it's twin keeled, it's quarter inch steel hull, it's going to displace about 40 tons. This is our cargo hull, 21 feet long, about 16 feet wide and up and high. And then forward of that is the companion way that comes down to the, uh, the forward cabin. That's where the, the crew's quarters will be. All of this will remain open largely uh, while we're operating so we can bring on people who have scientific equipment and marine research equipment and so forth. And that'll all be put in here, sample collections and all that. The engine room is at the back. So this is the engine room and this is where the main engine will go. We have a Cummins 5.9. We're probably going to put another one over there that's going to be an auxiliary to turn a generator and a generator uh, will be hydraulically driven and other hydraulic equipment will be scattered out in there with pumps, air compressors, that sort of thing. Uh, so there's going to be some more grid work added to here. And then the floor, really in here, is going to be got up in here. So a lot of that engine and everything else is buried in the floor. So we're looking at something that's going to be full loose with panels. This is the aft cabin now, and there'll be the bed. And, uh, Toilet head and shower in here, and that's our rudder post that comes up, and it'll be hydraulic uh, to run the rudder. And then we also have this big plate uh, that is our uh, uh, quadrant that mounts on top of that post, and we're going to use a chain and cable type steering system, which is a little old school, but it's also nice because the hydraulics don't have to work for that thing to stay working. So it'll be 30 tons when we take her to the water, which is 16 miles from here at the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. And it's a thousand miles then down various rivers to New Orleans, the Gulf of Mexico. And then we sail, uh, it's a three masted junk rig uh, sailboat. And we're going to do most sailing, but we're going to do, we, we're set up to do with a deck crane and a big cargo hatch and a big cargo area so that we can support uh, marine archaeologists, marine biologists, oceanographers, wreck hunters salvers, that sort of thing, dive operations uh, at low cost. In fact, we want to operate the boat for free. That's the big deal. Is, uh, we're using our YouTube and my, my pension and retirement and anything else we can scrape together to put a research vessel out there on the water that operates for nothing. Yeah. Which brings us to why I'm here today. Yeah. Is, uh, You're getting paid nothing. Getting paid nothing. I came down to help out, but there's, there's another thing we've been working on a little bit. Is uh, You guys know that I've got that new channel coming together, Sailing Through History and the yeah. Renegade Show. With that, when I get ready to start doing the portion that goes through Guadalcanal, yeah. where you have a part, the, the water's off of Guadalcanal, you've got what's called Iron Bottom Sound. And in Iron Bottom Sound, there are several wrecks you can dive on. There are several of them, actually, that are right on the shore because they beach the ships there. Right. And you've got a couple that are too deep to dive on, but Doug has an ROV. Yeah, we have an, an ROV that we're building that uh, uh, is basically a flying camera system, but you can tow it as well. And it, uh, the, the thing that we've done that was really sitting as a part is the whole thing only cost $5,000, but it does the same type work that is done by machines that are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we put uh, fish finder sonars on it. And so we can see, you know, 300 feet out into the sides into the blackness at 2,000 feet down. So we'll so be able to find some good stuff that way. Right. You pretty and, good if, eye. and if we lose it into a fishing net, then it... It only costs us five thousand dollars, so we can make another one. Yeah, it's it's not like you're losing a yeah. hundred thousand dollar piece. No, of you're not. Yeah, so we can take a few more risks with it that you normally wouldn't do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of the thing is uh, when we get ready to do the Guadalcanal portion of the campaign. Yep. Um, we're gonna meet up out there with my boat and Doug's boat, and that, we're gonna that get definitely to do some fits of that stuff marine archaeology. And, yeah. Yes, that that's well. That's yeah, and wreck hunting because yeah, yeah. There's and no then, telling what else is laying out there. Oh, they've, they've got some good stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna get to see a lot of that and be able to do a lot of the mapping of that. Yep. We'll be sending it to YouTube for everybody to watch. It's going to be out there for free, so anybody that gets on YouTube can watch that. So that's going to be pretty neat, being that able is, to see that history. And it does sound. Maybe I'll go back to work on the boat and get a little more done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm tired too. Yeah. How long do you think it's going to take to have this thing in the water? I know that's the big question everybody uh, yeah, asks. Yeah, I've I've been saying two years, and I've been saying that for the past six. So uh, I've now changed it to three years. About three years? Yeah. And I may say that, and I may keep saying that for another three years, but we'll see. <laughs> it's come along really good. Uh, this year has been, has, the, the work has definitely accelerated, and I'm, you know, we're testing paint now, so we think we'll be done with steel work here 
spring, late summer next year at the latest, you know, because there's all kinds of little things, like the ones you were working on yeah. today that you have to get done. And then we can start painting, then we do the interior work. And we're not going to make it, it's not a yacht, you know, there's not going to be a lot of uh, uh, teak and brass and that sort of thing on it. It's going to have functional interior in it, so we should be able to go pretty quick, quick, quick on the interior. I got to do back gouging today. Yeah? Oh yeah, you <laughs> did, didn't you? <laughs> Well, yeah, that crack won't open up again. No, no, yeah. it, it should be pretty solid. Yeah. So it's a, right inside the entryway of the boat there, which I'll, I'll get some of the footage from Doug, but yeah. right inside the entryway of the boat, there was a, a seam right there that we wanted to ground smooth, so it wasn't going to turn into something well, somebody's going to fall gonna, against. Yeah, we're going to fall against that one. Yeah. So with the ones we fall against, we try and round them over a little yeah. bit. So. And so I went back in and back gouged the whole thing and then welded yeah. the two pieces of plate in so it can be ground smooth now. Yeah. Didn't have enough time to grind it today, but now it can be ground smooth. I, I and, love grinding, that's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah so I, yeah. I, I'll be happy to grind I know you're kind of weird welds. like that, yeah, so I know. there it's, you go. It's a very zen type thing. You get into it, <laughs> the sparks are pretty. And, you know, I use that big ass grinder, so it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something else we talked about is a. Uh, I gave you a lot of t uh, tips and advice on how to get this thing to water and what's going to have to happen. Yeah. Uh, the last time I was down here in June, I came over and we figured out the route to water. Yeah. And figured out what it's going to take to put this thing in the water to get it on its way. So. Yeah. Because I know there there were a lot of people saying, "Oh no, it's never going to happen." Well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I I do this type of thing for a living. We yeah. know it's going to happen. Yeah, it could happen. There, there's and this is a pretty good town too to be in because there's lots of specialty trailers here and so, but there's other people looking at, you know, even the the mammoth. Yeah. Trailers for us, but so we'll see. We'll find a way. Yeah. There's always a way. We'll we'll get her handled there and then. You get this thing over the water, and then you got a pretty good trip down to the Gulf there. Yeah. And then down through the Panama Canal, and hopefully by then we're going to be all set up where we can meet up, go do Guadalcanal and that whole area there. And I'm sure there's. Do I have to go through the Panama Canal? Can we go around the Horn? Oh, if you want to. I think that'd be better. If you want to, I ain't going to be on board with you. You feel free to knock yourself out. Yeah, we'll make it. I'm going to be over on my boat. <laughs> So we're gonna, you're gonna what, take it down through the Panama Canal, head over to Guadalcanal, we'll meet up over there. Be happy to do that. And uh, that'd be pretty cool, we'll get to- That'd be awesome. Get to go check that out, do some wreck diving down there. I know I'm a certified scuba diver already, and- I can dive. So. <laughs> oh, I had a certification too, there's a little card in there. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And so we'll be able to go do a lot of that type of stuff. I know my boat's gonna set up, I'm putting a compressor on my boat, so Are I'll you really? tanks, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna hide a compressor down there in the lazarette. I, I, I'm thinking about that. I mean, you, but most of the stuff that I want to dive with is, uh, is compressed service supplied air. Yeah. You know, with lines down. I, it's. You know, you can need hard hat, you know. And, yeah, but it's you get you can stay down at you know shallow depths for all day long and. Uh, but you're right. We need some tanks too to get inside wrecks, especially. You yeah, yeah. You don't want to be doing that with a line. line. But that'd be pretty cool. And I mean, for me, more so, like, you want to go down and do some spear fishing and stuff like that. So it's. Pick your dinner. Yeah, pick right. my dinner. Pick, pick my dinner. dinner. You want that one? Oh, I want that one over there. <laughs> and so when you started this whole project, you had no experience with this type of stuff, did you? I mean, what would. No, and I, I, there's still lots of it I still don't have experience with. But you just kind of figured it out as you go? And we, we, you... We, we push our way through it. We get a lot of help from people on the internet, and uh, we get a lot of help from people that come by here that know what they're doing. And we get a lot of people that come by here that are like us, that don't know what they're doing. We figure it out together. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the rules are that if you know something, you share it. And if you don't, you're, you're open to learning it. Yeah. That's, that's all we ask. Yeah. So what inspired you to do this project? What made you say, you know, I think I'm just going to build a 75-foot steel sailboat in my front yard? Oh, that's, an, that's an interesting answer. Um, fear. <laughs> I was scared of doing it. Uh, I've been scared of a lot of things. Uh, I, I grew up with a, with a mother who was very kept us safe you know like mothers should yeah and a dad that tried to kill us all <laughs> and um, you know I, uh, later in life I learned that she's dad was having a lot of fun and uh, so I decided to uh, start you know living bigger you know, living more and uh, I started building this boat I just love that decision yeah and so uh, I think that's what a lot of people watch this for they, they're waiting to see uh, I was going to say inspired, but maybe they're waiting to see if when I die. So. <laughs> I, I, I know there's some of the haters out there that are rooting for it to like roll over oh, and sink yeah. the second it yeah. hits the water. Well, that, that you know, that, that you're not going to leave those people in life. But what yeah. you can do is you, you I like a, a Victor Frankel's uh, quote: "Is you can you can choose your response to things." And that's paraphrasing, but it, you don't have to pay attention to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I'm getting good at ignoring it. You want to you want to learn how to handle. Uh, 
uh, criticism and self-analysis. Get a YouTube channel exactly. and start reading the comments. <laughs> and, uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's an eye-opening thing. Yeah, people get so angry. They get so angry. It's just they get beside themselves. Yeah, but there's, you know what? It's, it's really funny. Is I don't see a lot of that on our channel anymore. Most of the comments, by and large, are positive and, and uh, encouraging and helpful. And uh, not just, uh, you know, you get the comments sometimes like, wait, well, you're doing it wrong. And what would be the right way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, finish up with that yeah. sentence, you know. Uh, but you get a lot of you get a lot of them that you know. Yeah, I think I would try this, or you could try this. And by God, we do. You know, Some, we sometimes our, you get perfectly good suggestions. Yeah, we do. And we're using one now on the yeah. tiles. You know, it's like flip the thing over. It's like oh, shit. Yeah, that worked. We flip them over, and sure enough, it, you know. Yeah. It was part of the solution. So. And for to to quantify that, the tiles are putting down on the floor in the yeah. boat. These things are going to make up the floor. It's basically a false floor that goes above the steel, and they're a little easier on your feet using these wooden yeah, tiles. Yeah, you don't trip over all the nuts and bolts. Yeah, you don't trip over all the nuts the, and the bolts tank and the tank and hatches. Yeah. And, yeah. So. Yeah, so, and it looks prettier. Yeah, it looks a lot better. It's, it's going to be really nice when you get it all done. I mean, I know there's... Yeah, we walk a line. We put artwork on the boat because uh, I like that expressiveness. Um, but at the same time, you know, I tried to get on a boat with an ROV when I was, taking, when I was going to take some sailing lessons, and they wouldn't let me because it was an ROV. They didn't know, really know what it was. It might scratch their gel coat, which, you know, most boats, that's, that's a legitimate concern. And so I asked, well, salad scuba tanks. I was like, no, you know, they knew what those were and they scratched things. If you don't have the racks for them and all that, you're yeah. not a dive boat, they're not gonna let you have those tanks. So I thought, well, you know what it'd be, when I get a boat, it's gonna be one that you can bring stuff on. And that's kind of how <laughs> we got started on this thing. So it's like, now we, you know, I'm gonna put bolt patterns on the deck up there that if you want to bolt something to the deck, it's it's two foot by two foot, three quarter inch bolts. Bring it on and we'll bolt it on. If you need it built, we'll have the welders in the shop on board and we'll help you build it. Yeah. So whatever it is, you break something, we'll, we'll patch it back together. You need something to you know, take core samples out of the bottom. Yeah, we can build that out. You know, so that's the idea is we can not only take the researcher out, but we can also you produce, get a lot of functionality. Yeah, we can produce you, the you're, machine. You're not running around behind them like Mother Hen going, don't you scratch my boat. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. So you can scratch the boat. We can actually weld to the deck, you know, and grind it off. And I'll yeah. just hand you a, bit, a bucket of paint and say, here, go fix that now. It's interesting to see the dream come together. Like, uh, and it's been very inspirational, I know, for a lot of people, especially me. When I first, last year at Christmas, you know, I was sitting around going, you know, I'm kind of tired of truck driving. I'd had a couple of really just crap weeks on the road. Yeah. And I'd been, I've, I've, just, I've seen some of your videos. I'd been stuck in this snowstorm, <laughs> and I just got hammered in this damn snowstorm. I was out there. I got stuck in first in New Mexico, then in Colorado, then I got stuck in for like three or four days on the side of the road in Oregon. And so, a trip that should have taken me four or five days wound up taking two whole weeks. Right. And I was just so frustrated. By the time I got back up, I went and got delivered, took a load, went home for Christmas. And I was sitting around, and then I found that video from uh, Delos, The Irrelevance of Time, where they're out there doing the island hopping in the Philippines. And I sat down, I was like, you know, I think I could do that. I think this is something that I could do. I could enjoy this. I've always wanted to live on a boat. I was in the Navy, grew up riding around on boats. I mean, right. I spent all this time with my grandpa on his boat. And so I started flipping. I watched through their videos, and then I found your videos. I think you were the next sailing channel that I found. Is that right? And so it was neat, and I got in there, and I, I first started looking at building a boat. And I took a little bit different way around it because I was, I was looking at building uh, one that's uh, from Glen L. It's one of their plans oh, yeah. called the uh, Lodestar. Yeah, I looked at Glen L stuff. And it's, it's a 55-footer, which would have been a beautiful boat, but I got to looking at it and looking at what it was going to cost to build it and everything else. I mean, we're like three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 to build yeah. this boat. And I came to the realization that I don't know anything about sailing yet. <laughs> and so I... With that, I said, you know, maybe it would behoove me to go get a boat and learn how to sail first. I mean, I know how to, I know power boats, but yeah. I don't know, you know, making a boat run on the wind. And so this is a whole new world for me. And plus, ocean-going boats. I mean, everything I've done has been on the lake or it's been in Puget yeah. Sound. I haven't gone out on the ocean and anything that wasn't a chartered boat, like we're going whale watching or whatever, did that right. quite a few times. But so for me, the it made a lot of sense to go buy the boat that I've got now and get set up that way and do some learning. And that brings me to kind of the big thing that I have coming in my future is I'm going to wind up building a 48-foot catamaran. It's, it's going to take some time to get the money for this thing together because it's going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. But yep. doing it the way I've done, it's been a good thing because I learned that, okay, what I really didn't want was a monohull sailboat. I want to go faster. Right. And a catamaran will do twice the speed. And when you start saying twice the speed, well, if it's 22 days to Hawaii in my boat, that means that it's 11 days on the catamaran. I mean, that's a huge difference. It gives you more time on shore, right. more time to do things. You'll have to give us a head start. You have to give you a head, head start. start. 
Well, I, I think what it's going to be is uh, you're going to call me when you're almost there, and then I'm going to shoot, shoot over to us. Yeah, <laughs> go come down and find you. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny is I started out uh, looking at cats. Yeah, because I just love the design, the speed, and the the, the big open uh, salons on them. And then I started figuring out what we were going to actually put on the boat. It's like there's, you can't put forty tons on a cat. No, it's well, a, you could, but it had to be a really. It has big to be cat. a really big catamaran because the way catamarans and monohull sail are very different. Oh yeah, catamarans get up and they'll, they'll actually, if you've got a real good one, it'll get up and lift a hole when you got a lot of wind going. Yep. And so that's how they get so much faster is that hole's almost coming out of the water, and so you're sitting there just riding right on that edge, and you're able to make that boat go really you got fast. A real like shallow that. draft too. Real, sh real shallow draft because you can lift the dagger board so you can get in, and get real yep. close to stuff, and. What I thought about, I mean, kind of the, the couple of things with consideration, yeah, we got to be lighter on the boat. Well, mostly all I'm doing is filming. I'm not doing research. I'm yeah. not doing anything like that. We're going to do some scuba diving. I'm going to do some surfing. I'm going to do some things like that. Yeah. So for that, I thought that the boat, okay, you know, catamaran will work really well, yeah. which more so my, my boat's going to be my home. I'm going to live there full time, which I mean, you, which you're going to move on yours full time too. Yeah. But it's and 74 so, feet. I'll, I'll have room for it, myself. Yours and some is others. 74 feet, so you're going to have a lot of room, which. Yeah. I could have done that with the mono hole that I wanted to build. I mean, the, the, the well, they really are different beasts, you know. And, and uh, like I said, if it hadn't been for the cargo thing, I'd have a catamaran. Now everybody yeah. would tell you, oh, it's going to flip over and turn turtle and it don't self right. And it's like that's rare that they ever do that. Uh, right? It happens once or twice a year, and yeah. people are being stupid when. Yeah, it and they're doing. Yeah, they're doing. They're, you're doing some sailing that they kind of yeah, they're they, on they, the edge, they, so they, they expect. They it, so. didn't reef when they should have generally. Yeah. Yeah, you go out with an overpowered boat, which an overpowered boat, no matter what it is, is going to get you in trouble. Yeah, you, bringing the mast down on a monohull will kill you. And so that, that's a lot what brought me into the catamaran was those considerations. Or you know, if, if I had to worry about cargo, yeah, I'd be doing the same thing. But I mean, mostly on my boat, it's just to be bringing people on board, yeah. film equipment. So yeah, that's that's going to be really fun. So if you guys want to check us out, because I know we're going to upload some of this to your channel, some to my channel. Yep. So your channel is SV Seeker. Uh, my channel, you've got either the Renegade Show or Sailing Through History. There's not anything on Sailing Through History, but you can go ahead and subscribe that's to it anyways be because one. that's going to be really cool. What we're doing with Sailing Through History is I have figured out how to get to every single World War II battle site in the Pacific except for the Alaska. You know, So we'll have to go to Alaska sometime, but that's kind of far out there away from everything else. But we're going to get to Midway. We're going to get all the way down and through the Solomons, down to Noumea, down to Australia to see, which there weren't any battles that were fought in Australia, but there were there were headquarters that were located there. There were things that happened there. So we're going to be able to show some of that. And plus, Australia is just cool. It's a beautiful country. I want to see it. So great excuse to go do that. Yeah. And then we're going to come all the way up. We're going to do the Solomons, which starts with Guadalcanal. Uh, we're going to do the Marshalls, run all the way through there, which, uh, you know, Tulagi, uh, what are the other islands? Kwajalein, Tulagi, a lot of those islands in there, all the way over to Wake, and then going to go do the Philippines, come up that way, Iwo Jima, then Japan. And so that's going to be a pretty all-encompassing trip of the Pacific out there. But we're going to be able to go in and show these battles, and it's going to be really neat because I have the ability to do uh, 3D drafting, and mm -hmm. that's something I, I, my dad started me on AutoCAD when I was a little kid, about 10, 12 years old. I got my first computer that had AutoCAD on it, and he taught me how to use it, and I started drafting with it. And so now as an adult, I can sit here and I can model these things in 3D like crazy because I was also a CNC machinist, so yeah. I picked up a lot of that there. Well, now I figured out what it's going to take to make all the models of the World War II ships. So through another program that AutoCAD makes, which is 3DS Max, I'm going to be able to go in and model those ships, and we'll be able to take drone footage where these battles happened and superimpose the ships on top of it with 3DS Max and I mean, you you can do the the shells firing everything. They've got plugins you can get to do that. So I'm gonna have to get a bigger computer to do this and <laughs> render yeah. that. But that's that's gonna be a very cool thing. At the end of the video, there will be links to both of our channels. You guys want to go check those out? If you're coming from my channel, from Renegade Trucker, where I've got this uploaded, or from the Renegade Show, because I'm gonna upload this to both channels, definitely go check out Doug's channel. He does some very cool things on there, and I'm gonna throw it. It'll actually be a link to a playlist that's going to start from where he started the boat oh, and it'll go all the way through so people can watch you know it, well, well we'll get you some views that way we'll get you some views <laughs> you know i think my mo my my uh my interest in the views is that you go out and and, and watch a couple of them until you, you get interested in going out into your garage and then turn it off and go out to your garage <laughs> don't watch all, all the videos it's, keep it you know but well, well anyways i'm going to make it where people can find it anyways, all right and they you, can, see you it can find it you're welcome to take a look i, I have watched I, Pretty much every one of your videos I'm coming sorry. up to this. I, I'm and sorry. I can't take give you back that time. You know? <laughs> well, I was, it was sitting around last year after Christmas. Didn't have anything else to do. I mean, it was snowing like crazy outside. and I mean, I'd already Stranded fought with the snow the truck, for a couple yeah. of weeks. Well, I was, I was at my dad's house. All right, that's excusable. Spending Christmas up there. So it was just... But if I you was, could be working on a boat, I mean, you ought to be working. Yeah, on a boat. definitely. Yeah, get out and go sailing. I mean, it's... That's right. 
it's a fun thing to do and I know that there's a lot of sailing channels out there and I had to decide with mine what I was going to do that was different and I think being able to team up with Doug on the stuff we're going to do I mean the being able to go down to those wrecks and the other things we're going to do around Guadalcanal there a lot of people don't today don't even know where Guadalcanal is you go ask a 16, a 16 hey, year old in this country hey, today I had to look at a map <laughs> you right. had to look at a map so a lot of people just don't know what went on down there and the that's things true. that happened and that's and, sad because it, it's uh, you know there was a, it, it, it's some very important a history. lot of lives lost there 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 were a lot of lives lost and a lot of people don't understand the sacrifice from that anymore yeah. it's so far removed yeah and so that's why we want to do this that's why we want to show this is so is that we have that living history there we have that link to it right and people will be able to see it for that they'll be able to go in and be on YouTube forever it'll be out there it'll be free they don't have to pay to get access to this information so it's going to be open source and that and I, I think it's going to be a really good deal for that. I think, I think it's going to really sounds great. I'm very excited about it. Really help people learn. And what what my idea with the channel is, is that say someone who's 14 to 16 years old doing a research project for school, yeah. they can find the channel. You know, when they search World War II, whatever, and it will have the entire war, the entire history of the war in the Pacific, and they'll be able to go in and if they want to, they can just cherry pick things from it. But if they go through and watch everything, they'll have a solid understanding because the first trip out. I'm starting with the pre-war, I'm starting why Japan was mad at us, we're going to talk about Roosevelt's Great White Fleet, things like that. All right. And we're going to talk about everything that caused the build-up, the embargoes, everything else that was going on, the yeah. war in China. Yeah. And we're going to get really deep into the pieces of that so people understand why the war was started, why it was that Japan felt compelled to attack us. Yeah. That's a great idea because we skip over that so much. We skip over that so much and it, when it relates to modern day diplomacy today, like uh, the, the reason that Japan was mad at us was because we had embargoed oil right. and steel, and they, right. so they said, "Well, screw you guys, we're going to come and take it." Yeah. And that's you know the history book I, that I grew up in. We start with Pearl Harbor. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't just you can't just start with Pearl yeah, Harbor. It, it, People it, have a reason for doing the it, things they do. Yeah, you, no you, matter if you, you like don't, them or you not. don't just you know put together an armada, call it Keto Butai, sail it three thousand miles across yeah. the Pacific and flatten an island. I mean, yeah. that, that's not a normal yeah. thing to do. And so it's important, I think, to understand that aspect of it and. My challenge, I think, with that is going to be keeping that part of it very interesting. Yeah. And what I'm hoping is that the, the greater plan that I have is going out in the, in the in the 42 Spencer I have now. I'm going to take that boat out to do that first trip. That's where we're going to do a lot of that. And I'm hoping by then I have enough following on the channel and I have enough uh, revenue coming in from those things and what I'm doing at the Renegade Show that I can afford to build my catamaran then. So we'll have a little break. That boat's kind of a fast build because it's a kid. Everything comes pre-cut. So you go in and get it put together. Hammer they make it those? Yeah, it's all pre-cut. <laughs> it, it shows up in a 40-foot and a 20-foot yeah, container? Yeah, I, I looked at it. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> it, it, it. It looked to me like the way to go. I mean, just for the time aspect. Oh, if, yeah. If I was, no, if I could. If, yeah, it is. It's a great way to go. If, if I had all the time in the world and I had a place to do it, but yeah, I'm going to be spending a good amount of money on the place to build this thing yeah. because it's 25 feet wide, it's 48 feet long, and so we're going to need another, you know, 10, 15 feet on either end of it to work on stuff. Yep. And then I've got to put a shed over the top of it. So I'm going to have some bills while I'm building this thing. So trying to get it built fast, I think that's going to be a really good deal. Well, if you can build inside, that would help a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll do in fiberglass. You have to. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, and you're, you don't want to be out there in the rain and the dust. Yeah. Especially in Tacoma. And no. so it's... <laughs> true. You, you will you're build under a cover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's not in Phoenix. You know what you mean? Down there, you'd still have the dust storms, but... Anyways, guys, the sun is going down on us. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, the links are in the video, end of the video here. We'll pop these up probably like right over our faces and everything while all this is coming up. And you could just click on that and go and check out our channels. And then this little thing right here in the middle here, that's going to be the uh, playlist on Doug's channel there. Okay. And uh, we'll catch you all later. Thank you.